Good morning, tubers. Matt M. Roy, back to you once again. Back to you on the 25th of July, 2019. Back to you with a vlog video. You guys have been asking for them, and I uh, figure today is as good a day as any to do a vlog. Uh, Mom and I do have some plans. Um, thinking about going over to uh, Smithfield, possibly. I don't know if that's going to pan out or not. just depends on if the weather holds. Um, it is very, very nice today. A lot cooler than it has been. Most of you probably have been dealing with the um, heat wave like we have this past, uh, pretty much this past whole month. I'm going to give you guys a weather update here in just a second. Let you guys know exactly how nice it is here in the southern part of Virginia. Today is Thursday with a high of 82. Now, I'm looking at the extended forecast till next week, and the highest we're going to see is 88 degrees. So that's really amazing compared to what we've seen the past pretty much month, this whole month of July. It's been in the high 90s with uh, about the same the humidity. So the heat indexes have been anywhere between 102 to 115, which we saw this past weekend. Um, it's amazing the change and I could tell right away when I went out for my bike ride this morning I got up a little bit late. I didn't sleep that great last night probably because of the weather change um, Let's see. I must have headed out for my bike ride around 930 and um, Immediately I could tell I had more energy. I could breathe easier. I had more stamina Yeah, I built up a sweat and sweat through my other uh, just one more episode shirt but it took a lot longer. I was actually able to do a 12, no, it was a 13.1 mile uh, bike ride down the Suffolk Seaboard Coastline Trail all the way to Driver and then back home. And that burned off 1,300 calories or as the uh, Map My Ride app shows at 1.3K. So I'm actually ahead of the game right now. And this temperature just really helps everything. The cooler the temperature the easier it is for your body to work. It's the same principle with your car. If you ever notice that when it's really, really hot out, your car doesn't really run as well. It runs hotter. Sometimes you get those little shudders and shakes, and uh, you tend to lose uh, horsepower. It's the same thing when it's really cold out, too. See, our cars are like our bodies. We run best at a mild temperature. Well, I'm going to pause the vlog. We're going to go catch up with Mom and show you what she's been up to. We'll see what the rest day brings, and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side all right so as you can see it's really kind of a mess let me put my coffee down here mom has been working very very hard re-grouting the tile here i'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh, radio real quick you want to show everybody what you've been doing Mom's down here doing it right now. Actually, she did the grouting the other day, and now she's sealing it. Just show everybody what you're doing. Ooh, just sealing it with this grout sealer. I, it's a second coat. I've done one coat. This is the second coat I've done. This so, coat the other day. so basically, it holds the grout in, and what? And, it, and it, well, it seals it because grout's very porous, so you want to put something on it so the, the dirt and everything doesn't adhere to it. Because grout is kind of like sand; it's porous. Right. Right. So you're on the sealing process. So basically she's yes. done the grouting. The cleaning. Yep, the cleaning. You can see that it looks really good. Before there were like real, like this one right here, you can see that the grout had started to decay and it just started to peel and crack. But she's done a really, really good job here. There's really not that many joints left. And again, the sealer is used to basically preserve it. Right, right. And to make sure she doesn't have to do this again. Because this is the first time you've done it in what? 20 years. About 20 years, yeah. A lot of work. That I, is. I had to clean it with Clorox and toothbrushes and brushes. And then after that, there was a lot where the grout came out. So I had to re-grout spots. And I kind of re-grouted over all the spots a little bit. And after I did that, and then I had to clean it all off, and then I sealed it once, and this is the second second coat of sealing. That's awesome. Seal and it. look what Dad gave her, his, <laughs> knee, pa her, his knee pads. <laughs> I bought some knee pads maybe about a month or two ago at a garage sale, and they're total garbage. Oh, no. I mean, they're all right, but when I kneel on them, you could, they're really hard. There's no real padding there, so you can uh -huh. still kind of feel the ground. But I guess I'll have to use them until I can find something better. Exactly. I have to do it in sections because you're supposed to do the sealing, sealant 
Then you have to uh, wait five minutes or so, and then you have to wipe it off the, the rest of the tile because you don't want it on the tile itself. Right. So that's one section. I should be finished. That's one section I did. Now I got to do probably two more. Okay, so you've done over there, and now you got to do I did the this bathroom, place. I did the toilet area. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna work my way out because I don't want to get stuck in that, here. That's <laughs> smart. See, a lot of people don't think that you got to work from yeah. the inside out because if you worked here, then how would you walk on it if right. it was still wet, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so that's what mom's up to. I don't know what we're going to do today. I told him maybe we'll try to go over to uh, Windsor Castle maybe, and yeah. Smithfield. We'll but we'll see what the rest day brings, and we'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers. Now that I'm in the kitchen, I'm going to show you guys something that I've been doing lately that is really, really awesome. I've been buying this oatmeal for a long time now. This is the uh, Better Oats brand of the... Um, instant oatmeal basically you microwave it there's two varieties that i personally like i like the blueberry muffin and that's the regular oatmeal in other words the um the typical oatmeal that you would get uh rolled oats and i also get the uh, steel cut original oatmeal and the steel cut is just kind of a finer grind to the oatmeal now what i've been doing especially when i have the steel cut oatmeal I have been taking the fresh frozen strawberries, and yes, I'm going to call them fresh frozen because that's what they are, and I've been putting in, and I'll take this out so you guys can see, I've been cooking in with it some fresh blueberries that mom and I got. Now, these were never frozen. These we, these we actually got from Wegmans Fresh. These are really good, too, a lot sweeter than their frozen counterparts. And then I put in also some of the fresh frozen strawberries. And the reason I freeze these, other than making them last a long time, is when you freeze them and thaw them, the strawberries make this delicious um, juice. And believe it or not, I don't put any preservatives, any sugar, anything in here. And this is actually very sweet as is. So what I'll do is I'll take two of these, put them in a bowl. I'll go ahead and put some of the strawberries with the juice and also put a bunch of the blueberries in. Now, when you do that, you actually have to cut out about half of the liquid. So with these, you're supposed to cut it till you see this bottom wavy line, and then you're supposed to fill it up. So if you use two of these, you would, nor you would normally fill this up to that line twice with water. Well, if you're doing this much liquid, you just do it once. So I basically put all of that in the microwave for about four minutes, and I have a healthy and delicious breakfast and i'm telling you this is so good for starting your day strawberries and blueberries have a ton of antioxidants and they will not only keep you regular uh, but keep those free radicals from uh, gaining hold on your body so if you guys are out there and you're looking for a healthy delicious breakfast and you can stomach oatmeal some people can't this is a great option for you guys all right, tubers, thought I'd give you a little update on the uh, Tahoe here. She's actually doing really, really well. Um, I finished the painting on the roof the other day. I put on the uh, last of the uh, coats. This is where all the rust was coming through, and I really, I did like a five or six coats of the uh, semi-gloss spray paint on here to cover and actually worked pretty well you can see that it's nice and solid i mean there's no um, penetration there but the rust was starting to come through so i went and i spray painted this this may need another coat in the near future but i'm going to leave it alone for now um, i painted up here too as you can see again it's not perfect but it's a lot better than it was the paint is no longer faded it's protected from the sun now the thing that i need to do right now is clean off some of the overspray i don't know if the camera can pick it up or not but if you look right here you can see there was some overspray from when i was spray painting and there's even some on here too so what i'm going to use for that is some of this glass cleaner here it's rain x automotive glass cleaner which i absolutely love um, i've used this a lot and i just need to get a, a razor and then i'm gonna go ahead and spray the window and basically use the razor to try and uh, get that overspray off so let's see how well this All right, works let's give this a try so what it's said to do online is to spray the window liberally with the foam cleaner 
and then you basically take your razor here and you go back and forth as much as possible and you can pick up some more of the foam there and don't worry this is not gonna hurt your windshield it's just a straight razor like like you find in an auto body shop and I can already tell that I think it's actually taken off a lot of the uh, paint uh, that was on the window you can kind of see let me see if I wipe it off here you can see some of the black paint on the razor blade so I would definitely say this is working if you look really close you can see where I've taken it off and where I still need to do it so let's go ahead and try this again trying not to hit the uh, the gasket or the uh, weather stripping on there because I really don't need to be replacing that and I do apologize if my camera works not the greatest right now the Sun is in my eyes so it's very hard to <laughs> see anything through the camera there we go trying to get it right up to the edge and just get as much of the overspray off as possible now again this is never going to be a show vehicle so I'm not really that concerned about it but this is more of a safety thing it was actually causing me to have a little bit of a blind spot out of this window so let's go ahead and uh, take my towel here oh which I put on the ground I'll put the razor down for safety reasons let's go ahead and wipe it off and as you can see the overspray is completely gone so yeah this technique really works I think I got a little bit left here if you look really close but the rest of it is totally cleaned off so yeah this technique works really well uh, just a little cheap razor that you get from uh, Dollar Tree get these two for a dollar and some Rain-X automotive glass cleaner and that does the job next thing I got to do is do the front windshield here and I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera again you can see all the overspray there and we'll see how it comes out so next thing you see should be a clean windshield all right tuber so just to give you an idea the left side is the one that I did and then the right side is the one I have yet to do and if you look right on top of there you can see where there was still a lot of overspray so again side I haven't done versus the side that I have done over there so definitely have a little bit more work to go I luckily I don't think I actually got any uh, overspray on this side this side actually seemed to do pretty well and yes I do realize I haven't gotten the um, sunshades for this yet I'm just waiting a little bit making sure that this is exactly the reliable vehicle that I think it will be so let me go ahead and finish this off clean the rest of that overspray off and I'll give you guys a finished picture or a video in just a couple of minutes all right tuber so I just finished got a few little scrapes up here that I might have to get with a different razor because this one finally gave up the ghost but for the most part it is all nice and clean I actually didn't realize how bad the overspray was on here until I started cleaning it off you guys can see my uh, my rag here is pretty dirty from all the uh, spray paint that I got off of there and unfortunately this really cheap razor from Dollar Tree the razor itself is fine but they give you this little holder that's just like a little clamp and you're supposed to stick the razor inside like that but it doesn't really hold the razor very well it kind of doesn't really work it's supposed to hold it but after a while the little uh, clips inside of there give up and the razor just kind of falls out so I was able to at least get most of it done before that part broke and of course I can just hold it like this but you want to be very careful in working with straight razors like this you can actually cut yourself very very easily all right tubers uh, about 1230 I just finished with the uh, Tahoe sorry about the abrupt stop to that video um, my phone actually started to overheat believe it or not and I think it had something to do with the fact that Tahoe's got a black hood and black if you guys don't know this right black radiates heat and sucks it up so I had the phone laid on there for a minute while I was finishing up uh, removing all the uh, overspray and man that phone got super hot so suffice to say that's all cleaned off um, I'm actually riding in the LeSabre right now because um, I wanted just to take this out you know I haven't actually driven this in a while and uh, 
with my vehicles, it's good to take them out every once in a while to at least make sure the batteries are charged up. Um, we're not going to head over to uh, Windsor Castle in uh, Smithfield today. It's a little too much on the hot side, and we're going to go up to Dairy Queen a little bit later. Mom and I are going to take our bikes up there, so we decided to do that instead. Probably going to go ahead and save that for tomorrow, which is actually going to be really nice because tomorrow, even though the temperature is going to be a little bit higher, um, the humidity is going to be lower. So the heat index, you guys have heard me talk about the heat index, is actually going to be a little bit lower tomorrow. So that would be a really good thing. And I've already sweat through one shirt this morning going on that bike ride. And man, I tell you, uh, even though I've lost the weight and for most of the summer I've been able to handle the heat, now that's getting really, really hot, we're looking towards the end of July, beginning of August, um, I'm praying for an early fall because I am really done with these hot temperatures. Let me make this light here. Um, you know, it is what it is. When you live in the southeast portion of the United States, you know, Virginia, North, South Carolina, and even more so when you head towards like Georgia, Mississippi, all those states, it's par for the course. You have these very hot, very humid temperatures, and unfortunately there really isn't too much you can do about it, but again, you want to make sure you stay safe on these very hot days. So let me go ahead and pause the vlog. Not sure what else we're going to get to today, but I will be showing you guys uh, some of the cars up at Dairy Queen later, and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, everybody, I'm in the backyard picking up some branches. Uh, we had a, th a thunderstorm here a couple nights ago, and we lost a lot of limbs. Wow. Check that out. Looks like we had a mushroom or maybe a toadstool. I, I don't know the difference, honestly. But, yeah, we've lost quite a few branches. We've got little ones here, but then we got a couple of big ones. Oh, my goodness. And this is a chore and a half. We have to do this because we actually pay somebody to uh, mow our lawn right now. And uh, he won't do this, unfortunately. I was just looking up there from years ago when we had direct TV. We still have that satellite dish. Might need to try to get that down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put them up here. I got to break them up in a few minutes. Um, this stuff I'm not going to save for kindling. I was thinking about it, but... It's not seasoned enough, and I got a lot of stuff that I saved from last year on our uh, wood pile here. Still haven't had a chance to clean any of this stuff up yet. This is all stuff we need to do. Actually, Dad and I want to build a uh, little fence here to kind of block all these parts in. I mean, he's got tires there, little plastic toolbox, some traffic cones, you name it. He's got it here, even this little uh, Sears, and it is a Sears. X cargo sport 20 uh, car top haul um, luggage hauler but let's check on mom see what she's up to I'm gonna take a break from this because I'm getting winded what are you doing I want to say hi to everybody again oh yeah I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but he keeps flying, he keeps circling around, yeah, and, he lands and he lands on this chair and for some reason. For but, um. Beautiful in the sun. Oh, here he is. Here Beautiful he is. Listening wings. Oh, so pretty in the sun. He's right on the chair there. Yeah, Let me see if I can zoom in. You guys see him right there? Really, really nice. Yeah, he's just been hanging around here for a long time. <sighs> But um, I actually finished the mongoose. You guys had a few of you asking about this the other day. This is that um, bicycle that I picked up from the side of the road. This is a mongoose dynametric. And uh, I actually had it dated to about 1990. And uh, I did most of the work on this myself. It needed quite a bit of work. Um, when I first got it, this brake cable had come loose, so I had to reseat that. Basically, it wasn't too difficult. I had to uh, manipulate the cable. The cable had actually broken off, and this was just flopping, so I had to reroute it around here and put the fitting back on and put it back in this little uh, holder. Now the brakes work perfectly fine, front and rear. 
Um, let me see what else we got that I did. Um, I added the kickstand. This was something that uh, I got from our local bike shop for 10 bucks. Basically, you just bolt it on there and it gives you a kickstand because this actually did not have one to start. Added this little cup holder. This is one I got from Walmart. Really nice. It just straps around the back and stays pretty secure. That same day, I actually put new grips on because the original foam grips were totally disintegrated. Um, these got from Walmart. These were maybe eight bucks, so not a bad deal at all there. And the one thing that I could not do myself, well, I probably could have, but I really didn't want to, it needed new tires and tubes. So I took it to my local um, bike place here, Scat Bikes, off of uh, High Street in Portsmouth. And uh, they do a great job. They have great prices there. If you live in our area, make sure you check out Scat Bikes. And I brought it there. They put on two of these Arison Metro Cruiser tires, really nice uh, road tires. They're even pretty good for um, off-roading, too, though. This bike is more of a road bike, not really a mountain bike. Um, they did that for me, and they also replaced the brake pads on here. And what did I say it cost? I think it was like $70. 70. Yeah, and I mean, it was such a great deal. So basically for $70, I got myself a really nice bike that originally was probably every bit of two or three hundred dollars and that was in 1990 prices so you had inflation to that spike was also probably around five or six hundred dollars uh, in today's money and uh, the other thing i added was this air comfort seat which i really like mom and i both have this we got this from lidl and the really cool thing with this is you can pump up with air it's got an air bag in there that'll firm the seat up for you and uh, give you a really nice comfortable ride. And then when you're done, you just go ahead and push this air release button. If my camera will focus. And the air releases. So I need to go ahead and eat some lunch. Mom and I are gonna hopefully head up to Dairy Queen soon. I'm trying to convince her to take the bikes up there. And she said she will if I promise to be good on the road or at least stick to the sidewalks. So we'll see what happens, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get something neat, and I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, everybody, so we made it up to Dairy Queen. Mom and I uh, rode our bikes. The mongoose made it just fine. Mom's bike did well. Mom's over there with the rest of the group, and uh, I was going to show you guys a few of the cars. I'm going to have to make this quick, though, because the battery life on my phone is dying fast. See what they got here. Anything new? Oh, that's real pretty. Chevy. Call this one of the gangster style cars from the 30s. Do not step. You always got to respect their owners, the owners' cars. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, for safety, you want to have the uh, fire extinguishers there. Got a Malibu SS, very similar to Dad's 64, but not a uh, convertible. Pretty much the same dash. I love the interiors on these. Cars from this era had that sort of style that you just don't get anymore. Look at that beautiful engine with all that chrome. What we got there? Oh, that's cool old school windshield washer bottle when they were actually glass I believe back then you actually just hooked up your um, washers you had a little tube that went in there it's the way they used to do it but apparently this one has been retrofitted with a more modern bottle you could probably just put that tube in there if they needed to Whew. lots of nice vehicles up here in Dairy Queen this week Got something a little different here. Got a Ford Ranger. Let's see, I am not familiar with that engine. I bet one of you guys will tell me what that is. Actually, that might be the four. Is that the four cylinder? One, two, three, four. Let me count them. Now nah, it's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is the six cylinder, I think. Very cool, though. I love Ford Rangers. My dad had one years ago. This looks like maybe a 99 or, or 2000, somewhere around there. 
and we got an old school car. It's probably a police car at one point. Got the spotlight still on it. Hey, hey. Good friend of ours brought his vehicle up here. Love the lights on that thing. All right, tubers, I may have to end this uh, vlog here for today because my battery is dying. I don't want to make it too long. But you can see it's a great turnout here up at Dairy Queen. Uh, this is in Chesapeake Square, corner of Portsmouth Boulevard and Taylor. You can see there's a lot of parking they don't have for these, but you know what? It actually makes them a lot of money. They have this every Thursday, pretty much year round, of course, weather permitting. All right, tubers, let's go ahead and end the vlog here today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.